Good evening. We begin tonight with a rare look inside Anonymous. They're this shadowy and motley group of hackers and activists who answer to no one, drawn together by love of internet mischief. Well, now, now they're evolving into this movement of social change, a, a real driving force behind the Wall Street occupiers. Uh, no surprise, they're hated by corporate security, but also hunted by the FBI. And one of the questions we're asking is, who are these people and why are they taking to the streets? To get some answers, Amber Lyons stepped into the shadows. Hey, back up, back up, back up. It's a dark and disturbing vision. A world where riot police attack with impunity. What happened? What happened? He got, oh, he got shot. Where democracy is corrupted by greed and dissent is crushed. That's how Anonymous sees America. And they say that's why they're fighting back. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. It's a movement that defies description. Leaderless. Tell me what democracy looks like. Faceless. Anarchic. This is our space. A loose collective born on the internet, Anonymous has no official members and no hierarchy. But within the group, some individual Anons have greater standing, earned by their skills as hackers, video makers, to see it with my own eyes and record it myself, and increasingly street level activists. Show me what police name was on. Troy, not his real name, is one of them. This is what happens have had enough. This is what happens when greed goes unchecked. Troy says he was drawn to Occupy Wall Street after watching his mother struggle with medical debts. He himself is working two jobs to make ends meet, despite having a college degree. You kind of just lose track of days, lose track of time, but uh, it's worth it. It's all, it's all worth it. We met him at the Occupy Wall Street camp at Zuccotti Park. There's no specific person that talks for us. It's more like a hive, you know, an idea is brought up and whoever agrees with it, if the overwhelming majority of people that agree with it, then we go with it. So we're following Troy and he's been out here policing, kind of making sure that all of these protesters are getting along with the community and not causing any problems. We're handling internal affairs as far as damage control within the community, making sure that uh, everybody's respecting the local, the local small businesses around here. How's it going? How's it going? But he's not just watching over the protests. He's also watching the police. Part of the evolution of Anonymous from hackers to activists. Anonymous was born a decade ago in one of the weirdest and darkest corners of the internet an anything-goes image board called 4chan. 4chan users post anonymously, and the name stuck. We do not forgive. The group adopted a distinct identity and its own symbolism, a mask taken from the movie V for Vendetta, a retelling of the story of the English rebel Guy Fox and his plot to blow up the House of Lords in 1605. Instead of gunpowder, Anonymous uses the Internet. Anonymous attacks its targets by flooding and crashing corporate and government websites or digging up and publicizing highly embarrassing information. It's called trolling. They troll targets out of genuine outrage, but also just for fun. L-U-L-Z, it's a kind of pluralization and bastardization of laugh out loud. New York University professor Gabriella Coleman has been watching Anonymous for years. It's a term that kind of denotes the sort of pleasure, humor, laughter, everything from something which is quite playful, harmless, to engaging in a kind of full-fledged trolling attack that um, humiliates. Anonymous's campaigns, known as operations or ops, can be dramatic. In late 2010, a distributed denial-of-service attack took down the website of PayPal after the company cut off support for the online whistleblower site WikiLeaks. PayPal continues to withhold funds from WikiLeaks, a beacon of truth in these dark times. Sixteen Anons were arrested by the FBI, charged with conspiring to intentionally damage PayPal's computers. 
This is a message from Anonymous to the Bay Area Rapid Transit System BART. This summer, Anonymous attacked the San Francisco area's public transportation system, BART. BART had cut cell service within the transit system as a way of disrupting anti-police brutality protests. Anonymous's reaction was devastating and vicious. We will not issue any more warnings. Op BART included the release of a naked photo of a senior BART employee. Sometimes it kind of makes you laugh, sometimes it makes you cringe, sometimes it makes you laugh and cringe at the same time. All of a sudden, you're like, oh my gosh, there is this, you know, dagger that's being thrown. Uh, and a naked photo. Yeah, a naked that. photo. Do, do you feel like there is a, a, a fear out there of, of, you know, what they could possibly find or, or leak about a certain individual? Absolutely. I mean, that's what makes them who they are, is that they are kind of bad boys and rude boys to some degree. There is a dual sort of fascination and horror that goes on at the same time. Be aware. Be vigilant. Here. Anonymous was evolving, using its power to shock and disrupt to affect social change. During the Arab Spring, the collective emerged as a full-fledged activist group taking up the cause of Tunisians fighting against a repressive regime, literally saving lives. The Tunisian government has made itself an enemy of Anonymous. They did everything from take down government websites, they wrote scripts to stop the phishing of passwords, they brought massive media attention to Tunisia. And last fall, Anonymous broke cover here at home stepping out from behind their secure computer screens for a new cause, Occupy Wall Street. There is a revolution brewing. Suddenly, the symbols of Anonymous were everywhere, in flags, masks, banners. We are the 99%! When we return, pepper spray and Anonymous strikes back. How are they getting personal information of these uh, officers? I'd rather not say. The shadowy internet group known as Anonymous has grown now far beyond its hacker roots. It's now emerging as a forceful public relations weapon for the Occupy protest movement. Amber Lyon takes you inside Anonymous. We are Anonymous. Anonymous likens itself to the Air Force of the Occupy movement. Everyone, everywhere will be occupying their towns, their capitals, and other public spaces. Anonymous has an array of people on the streets. We're talking medics in San Francisco, tech support in Washington, D.C. And here in New York, guys like Troy. Troy, not his real name, is part of an army of citizen journalists documenting the movement and the police by broadcasting live video over streaming sites. When they see evidence of what they believe is police misbehavior, Anonymous strikes back, releasing personal information about specific officers. And hopefully he'll think twice before he pulls out his baton against somebody who's holding a sign saying we just want peace. And, and how are they getting cell phone numbers and personal information of these uh, officers or bankers? I'd rather not say. In September, an NYPD officer named Anthony Bologna was filmed pepper spraying two protesters. Anonymous took direct action. We will unleash hell on your phones, your servers, and anything else we can find. One of the most active subgroups within Anonymous is called the Cabin Crew. Their specialty is doxing. It's shorthand for combing the internet for all the information you can find about a target and then releasing it publicly. Cabin Crew have noticed the injustices being committed by the New York police. Cabin crew compiled Bologna's name, his home address, past legal actions, even the names of his family members, and put it all online. After a police investigation and public pressure, Bologna was placed on leave and reassigned to Staten Island. What do you think that did to the NYPD when they saw this officer's information get posted online? I think that they would see it as a form of vigilantism. They're pushing the boundaries of the law. 
But I think some of their actions also reveal the ways in which either private security companies or police are also acting outside of the boundaries of the law. Anonymous's biggest coup in the propaganda wars Anonymous. was this. Anonymous. In a non-group by the name Operation Leaks, post the clip on YouTube. The next day, the clip tops 100,000 views. Three days later, one and a half million. The casually spraying cop had it all. It was outrageous, ridiculous, lulzy, and effective. Police in riot gear sprayed students. Pepper spraying student protesters. The incident was picked up by the mainstream media and replayed over and over again. They shot me. Anonymous wants to frame the narrative of the Occupy movement as a contest between peaceful protesters and a militarized police state. Oh my gosh. Reality, though, isn't quite so clear cut. At Occupy Oakland, some protesters attacked the police with rocks and bottles. Others erupted in a fury after the city tore down their encampment. They're getting a little heated. Some people are trying to tear down this fence and head into the main area, but others are trying to keep them quiet and calm so that the police don't have to get reinvolved. I need some help. We need some more help. You're willing to fight us, but not the police? I think you might fight. And you're doing their job. The anonymous PR machine focused solely on instances where the cops got out of line. And they have plenty of ammunition. What happened? What happened? He got hit. She got shot. During one night of chaos, police apparently fired a projectile directly at a former Marine named Scott Olson, who was peacefully protesting against the crackdown. Anonymous went into overdrive. I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. Scanning the video for police badge numbers and names offering a reward for anyone who could identify the officer responsible. The case is still under investigation. The Department of Homeland Security has put out several alerts to law enforcement and corporate security focused mainly on the group's hacking activities. And the FBI has made more than a dozen arrests. We're living in a police state. With but there's no indication that has cramped Anonymous's style. Their latest op? Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all on planet Earth. On Christmas Day, members crashed the website of a security research company, hacking its client list, along with their credit card numbers, in order to steal one million dollars for donations to charity. We are anonymous. Expect us. And our correspondent Amber Lyon now joins us here in studio. Um, a little frightening, yeah, a little, little scary. <laughs> Slightly, especially for law enforcement in many aspects. You know, I, I gotta ask, so what if they get it wrong? What if they put up some personal information that is inaccurate? Uh, do they have any accountability? There's very little accountability. Because of the way Anonymous is organized, anyone can claim to be anonymous. Hmm. There's also a lot of extreme outliers. And, and you know, law enforcement is intimidated by anonymous we tried to get an interview with anyone federally or locally and they refused to send an officer forward kind of to the chopping block mm -hmm. because they feared that if this officer appeared on camera they could become a target of anonymous all right amber, amber thanks so much great Thank story and, and coming up